Okay, and welcome to my first video for Weaver Leather. In this video, I'm going to make a leather bag. I'm using this leather, which is not super, super thin and not super, super thick. It's like a medium thickness. I wanted leather that would create a bag by which it would stand up on its own. That was sort of my goal. And uh, there's a much thicker piece of leather. And this is my razor knife that I'll be making eventually. The only reason I'm using this right now is because I did not have my weaver leather head knife available to me. I left it at my other shop and eventually you'll see me use it down further in the timeline. But this is a technique I developed a long time ago. I was working in Taylor's leather shop. That's my girlfriend's other shop. And she didn't have a long straight edge because she typically doesn't need one. All of her leather cuts are curved. And so here I'm using the edge of the table and a nice sharp razor blade. This will work with any kind of razor blade that you have. Using the edge of the table as a cutting surface. And you see how I did that there. It's a technique. It takes a little bit of practice. And if you're careful, you absolutely will not cut the edge of the table. And now you see I just pre-bent this uh, leather here. This is going to be the main body of the bag. I'm using this incredible Weaver leather machine. This thing is unstoppable. It doesn't groan. It, it doesn't even make any noise. It's unbelievable. And there I'm using that same technique. And now I'm making the sides. That main piece that I just sewed was the main body of the bag and now these are going to be the end caps. So uh, I'm basically making a U-channel with end caps. And the way I think of sewing anything together is the way I think of package design. I'm basically making a package for my tools here and how do you transfer flat material into three-dimensional objects. And there comes the discipline and the, uh, the know-how. I've never actually made a bag like this. I've sewn things together similarly but not exactly like this so I kind of had to think everything through and what I'm making now is the pockets and I realized I wanted the pockets to be puckered at the top and to do that you need a tapered pocket but will be sewn on straight you see what I'm going to show you there so there's my side and then that's the pucker so by sewing the sides on parallel to the to the to the base sides I will get that pucker at the open top and again, never did this before, never used this machine before just a couple of test test attempts. And I'm leaving enough at the top of each stitch for a rivet, which I'm going to add later. I don't want to punch the rivet through the stitching, which would, of course, allow it to eventually start unraveling. And here I am just kind of thinking this through, just working in real time, thinking in real time. I had a, a bag, uh, you'll see it on the table later, as inspiration, but it was made completely out of canvas, structured much differently than than the way I'd structure it here. But that bag was the right size and shape that I liked. Now here you see my components are starting to come together. Now I want to put three pockets on the side, each long side of the bag. And in between those pockets I'm going to put a strap. And you'll see later in the video. So now I'm um, making these tapered pockets so that they will also have that puckered or well, bloused open top. And I'm just backstitching every time I start and stop I backstitch and uh, snipping it off. And again, this, this machine is designed to go through, uh, I think, at least three quarters of an inch of, of hide. And it is unbelievable. I, I've never worked on such an incredible machine as this. And I, I feel like I could create anything out of leather with a machine like this. It's unbelievable. And again, just you see those three sides. And you see I got the other three sides already done. And I'm working in real time. Working with leather is very intimidating. And I know that it's coming from somebody that works with everything. But you just have to jump in. And if you screw it up, you just figure out a way to hide your mistake. And there's been a few mistakes in this. And a couple of solutions. I didn't really know how I was going to solve those solutions or finish certain ends until I got right near them. So for me, it always works best to just jump right in. And now you see I have my main body and I have my sides and now I'm sewing the sides. My seam is going to be showing on the outside and the next one I make I'll be more conscious of where my top stitch is versus my bottom stitch because they're both going to show. The top stitch tends to be a little bit more attractive than the bottom stitch just by nature of the way any sewing machine works. And here I kind of flip-flopped around. I wasn't extremely conscious of it but I am making a tool bag and the tool bag is going to get beat up so if this was a Hermes bag, and I'd be paying much more attention to where my top stitch versus my bottom stitch. 
And now I didn't really have a solution at this moment in time. I didn't know how I was going to sew across the bottom. And also if you sew all the way around and make a U shape, you end up not matching the top at the top. <laughs> I know leather is forgiving. So I started both my stitches on both sides from the top down. And you'll see here, I never sewed the bottom. I started from the top down to make sure that those top hems would actually match up. And now I already did the other side off camera. So I knew what I was going to do. I had to put a little dart there. That's when you cut a little piece to alleviate the, the leather so it didn't bind up or buckle up there. So made the dart. I'm using some barge glue, which is a two coat cement used mostly for shoemaking and leather. And I barge glued that seam so that it wouldn't slide around while I was stitching. What you don't want is a big pucker when you're at the end of your, your throw on the stitching machine. You start at one end and you get a big pucker on the end. This way I could predetermine and stretch the leather out to where I wanted it to be. And I gave myself about a half inch seam allowance everywhere. So whatever size I knew it was going to be, I added a half inch. And what size I knew it was going to be was a guess. So now here I'm sewing across the bottom. And again here now my top stitch is on the bottom, which was a mistake for me. But mechanically it's still fine. Cosmetically it's just not quite as perfect as it can be. But... This is the first bag I've ever sewn together. So now after doing that, I realize I should do my top stitch on the show side. And I tried to land that stitch line right inside the previous stitch line that went up the wall. And I back stitched a little bit, pull my slack out and snip that close as I can. And uh, now here I'm pretty happy because I had some solutions I really didn't know how I was going to solve. Those side pockets ultimately are a little too deep. I can't get my hands inside of them. So if I was going to drop a credit card or something down in there or a half a pencil, I'd have to pinch it with my fingertips. But first bag ever. Now I'm using this incredible little Wanda Rivet machine. And it punches the leather straight away. So you put it there and it's called a splash rivet where the other side kind of stars out like an octopus. They do have caps. I could have put a cap on the other side. But again, tool bag. You see the splash rivet on the other side, how it fans out. Tool bag, this is all acceptable. I'm not going to the black tie event with this bag. Got to keep in mind what your end use is going to be. Again, just put it in place and pull down on that lever. And now this is the solution I ultimately came up with, which I didn't have straight away. And I'm not saying this is the best, but for a tool bag, it's, it's good for me. I... You notice I put more barge glue than I needed on there and I used it as sort of like a print pad to kiss the barge glue onto where it was going to go. Let both sides dry a little bit and then stick them together. And now I'm using punch tools. I'm punching a hole and now I'm using these crazy, I, I don't know what these are called. Maybe these are called saddle rivets. But this is insane rivets. These are copper. You put them in place. I have a little piece of steel brick there. And then you bang it down, that washer on the other side. You cut it to however length you need. And then you put a little ball end on it with the, the setting tool. And there you notice the most vulnerable part of the bag is now never going to pull apart. And I tried to land that punch hole so it did not cut any threads. Cut it low. Stamp it. Now, there might be some professional bag watchers, uh, makers watching this and saying, oh, you should have this, you should have that. Well, you know what? I never made this kind of bag ever in my life, and I like to jump right in just to try and figure it out. I'm extremely happy with my net result. I, I've been using this bag from the minute I finished it. I have, it's right here by my side. Again, now I'm using the head knife provided by Weaver, and this thing is absolutely dreamy sharp. It is just a beautiful knife, and I'm using it in that same technique. Against, there it is. It's a beautiful knife and it is perfectly sharp and you see what I'm doing there. And that's just gliding right through there. So I'm making my straps now. I make one and then I make two and just before the cut, the camera dies. And so then we end up in my shop. So that was in Taylor's shop. That's my girlfriend. She's a leather worker. And now we're in my wood shop. And the only way I could think of, I'm making these straps trifold. So what you see is that three inch wide piece. It's about three and a quarter inch wide. I left a little bit of allowance for this saw blade. Um, I'm basically skiving a little gully in both of these pieces. You see that sky? That's from the end of the saw blade. And that's so I can fold the leather on that skived spot. Skiving basically means removing some leather so you could make a hem or a fold. Now, 
I don't know how else anybody else would have done this. If you were a full-time professional leather worker, I don't know how they would have done that. But you see here, I use the same technique on steel with a grinder. So to me, it's just material. I want to fold it. I've got to fold it on the most vulnerable spot. How do I create a vulnerable spot? Well, let's kiss it with a saw blade. And then I just use some regular 3M spray glue to fold it back on itself. And I do the same thing here. That was a little bit harder. I had a little bit more of a harder time wrestling the onto the finished, wrestling the unfinished leather onto the finished leather. And so here to train it, to get that leather to do what I want while I'm waiting to sew it, I keep it overnight in between two pieces of wood. Now it's the next day. And this incredibly beautiful piece of machinery is just a dream to work with. And you notice I have the, the stopper down so I can get a consistent sew line from the edge. And I'm trying to land that stitch so it goes on the entire piece through all three layers. And on one side, I needn't worry because it's, it's on the folded side. On the other side, I got to be close attention. I got to pay close attention because it's on the, the vulnerable side where there's the hem. And now I'm connecting the two together. So I made two pieces the same size. I never actually measured how long it was. I just cut them to where it felt right. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So that's going to be under the bag. So there's my, my seam. And there you see uh, the hem. Now I do that to both ends. And I end up with a continuous loop right here. I cross cut. So there. Now I did the same thing twice. I, I end up with the end sewn together and now that's going to get laid up under the bag and the other loops are going to become the handle. And there we are. I'm about 95% uh, done with this bag. You see there? And I clamp where I think I need the, the rivet. This is a little nerve wracking because you, you're getting close and you're proud of what you did but you just got to trudge on with the same confidence and now I'm putting these rivets in here. Same rivets I used on the corners. I'm making sure that I have a consistent look all the way across the bag, all that the, all the hardware is put in in the same fashion, the same direction. And it's starting to really come together now. And I was getting late in Taylor's studio and she has a neighbor that complains. So you'll see a funny thing we did here. I held the steel brick up underneath and she hit the thing so we weren't banging on the floor. And so now we're back in my shop. It's the next morning and I'm able to drive those rivets home completely, putting the the ball end on there with that rivet setter. And there it is, it's working out really nicely. And there it is, there it is. And I went back in and with the pair of scissors, I snipped all the little strays, stray. Oh, there's a little hard shell bottom. That's just a piece of quarter inch plywood. And now I'm putting my stamp on there. And that's a stamp made by a company called Stamp Yours, which is a Great couple of brothers out of Cleveland. Stamp yours. Find them on Instagram. And now it looks like a real Hermes, Hermes, Hermes bag. I'm real proud of this one. Like I said, it's the uh, first one. And as it started getting more and more good looking, I was being more careful. But I'm super happy with this. And I'm real happy to be making stuff for Weaver Leather. So, guys, thank you very much. I, I love the tools. I love the leather. And there's Little Hands. Mr. Little Hands is just loading the box up. Thank you, Mr. Little Hands. And then there you go. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something nearly as much as I did. Thank you, Weaver.